us, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Uh, let everyone know where you are coming from, both geographically and uh, your organization. My name is Kate Cochran, and I'm with Upaya Social Ventures. We're doing this session in collaboration with MIT's D-Lab. And I'm going to turn it over to Yona to take us through uh, the, first, uh, the first part. Hi, everyone. My name is Yona Ratishti, and I'm with MIT D-Lab. And I want to get us started with a very broad question. How can we unlock more capital to support both equity and impact? Evidence, as, as most of you know, is mounting that our current system does not distribute resources in an equitable way. Um, and one of the areas in which it fails to do so is in the way that it systematically undervalues women and it undervalues their work. So for things to change, we really need to reflect where, why, and how we invest our assets. That said, there is not one linear path uh, to incorporating gender into your capital allocation process. And so today um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. So if you haven't started, or even if you've done this for a while, it doesn't mean that you cannot move forward and you cannot uh, further increase your traction in this space. So um, can you please, please move on to the next uh, slide? Uh, the one after this. Uh, so what are the goals of our time together? So together we hope to unpack the gender lens investing journey into three parts. First, we will do a diagnostic. We'll look at what you're doing, um, what uh, you're excited about and help build awareness on the type of the gender lens approach that is best uh, for you. Next, we want to deconstruct the investment process. And by doing so, we'll really do some challenge mapping so we can really begin to pinpoint uh, priority areas for action. And third, we'll delve into new strategies. So this is when we'll converge again as a group to discuss strategies that can deepen and supercharge uh, your journey around gender lens investing. And uh, the thing I want to note is that we'll do this along two dimensions. So each of these steps will start with a process of individual and personal reflection, and then we're going to move into a group reve reveal. Um, so by coming together as a community in this workshop, uh, we hope that we can really begin to benchmark our processes, uh, test a little bit of our thinking, and also cross-pollinate ideas as a community. So um, as, as Kate said, continue to introduce yourself in the chat. It's fantastic to see um, everyone that's uh, already here. And um, really to, to get a sense of who's in the room, I would like to launch a really quick poll. So can, can we do that? Um, so take a look and please let us know which of the following categories best describes you. Great, so I think we can um, share the polls. So we've got uh, some investors in the room and some accelerators and incubators that I think um, are spot on for the goals of the session um, that uh, they can look a little bit about how they run their programming and how they manage their, their assets. Uh, but also it's interesting to have um, some entrepreneurs um, into the room because I think particularly in the second half of the session, they'll have so much uh, to offer and, and enrich the discussion. If you're in the, um, black box of other, please present and, and share who you are in the room and, and, and in the chat, and also share a little bit more about what you hope to get uh, from this session. Um, so let's move on to the next slide. Um, so let's get started and let's get some definitions out of the way. Gender lens investing is the use of capital uh, to generate financial returns um, and doing so by addressing gender disparities and also advancing gender equity. As the name gender lens seems to suggest gender, that there's this lens dimension. It's about a way of seeing that can help an investor, a capital allocator, really find opportunity and illuminate risk um, in, in a different and a more nuanced way. So the other thing I want to mention is that gender is more than just female identity and women. We'll talk a lot about women in this session, but 
um, we really want to think about it as the broader power dynamics in the system. So there's this growing consensus that gender equity, in particular, it's a good investment, it's good strategy, it's good for business, and it's good for society. Um, and what is the state of the sector? So I've pulled together this fantastic uh, graph that's from Project Sage. If you haven't read that report, I really recommend that you do. Um, it's uh, developed by Wharton Social Impact Initiative and also Catalyst at Large. And what it shows is that in 2019, over 138 funds um, have uh, put together around uh, almost $5 billion around gender lens investing. So how can we make sense of this number? Um, it's big in a sense because we can see that it's doubled from 2018 numbers. So it means that there's momentum in the space. It's growing, it's exciting, but it's also small because if you put it into context, really it is a drop in the bucket. So how can we get more money and more people into the space and help those that are embarking in the journey to really be more strategic and go faster? Um, so let's get started with really the first part of, of our workshop together. Can we move on to the next slide? Um, so some investors and some incubators and accelerators find uh, gender lens uh, to be a little bit intimidating. They find it to be a niche strategy still. Um, so how can we really incorporate it and how can we bring it more to the front? Um, the thing that I want to note that it's not a one size fits all. And so we've developed this gender lens investing profile as a way to help move people and, and really build um, your capacities in this, um, in this work. Uh, for gender lens investing to work, there's two things. First, it needs to be contextual. Um, gender diversity is different um, in Silicon Valley. It's different in Bangalore. It's different um, in, in, in Nairobi. Uh, but it's also different depending on the organization that's tackling it. And so we have to be really aware of the different starting points, motivations, and objectives um, that, uh, that you bring to the table as you're embarking on gender lens investing. The second thing is that it's not an all or nothing scenario. Uh, there are multiple pathways to developing your gender lens, and we will use five questions um, to frame the opportunities and help you um, really build uh, this profile. At the end of this first exercise, we will develop five, uh, through these five questions, we will develop this unique rubric, which highlights your particular characteristics and their capacities uh, around gender lens investing. So let's get started. Can we move on to the um, uh, next slide? Um, so the way that we're going to do this is we have five questions. We're going to do a little bit of definitions, and then we're going to move it, pass it on to you and, and, and ask you to pick, um, you know, where you kind of fall along these five questions as a way to build, build your profile. Um, so the first one that I want uh, everyone uh, to think about, I want you to put on your reflection hats and, and, and dig into is that, um, as, as uh, people that care about impact in this space, um, where does gender fall into your impact considerations? Um, so you could have no gender impact focus as of yet. You can have sudden gender consideration. You're just starting um, to do some uh, thinking around it, or you could have a very specific and well-articulated gender mandate. Um, so let's go on to the next, um, uh, slide and also uh, share the poll. This question is important because investors weigh their decisions often based on the type of mandate that they want to generate. Um, so uh, sometimes it's about a community, a place, a group of people, the planet, etc. Um, so I think we've got quite a bunch of responses, uh, and we can we can share that. So we've got about 50% of people in the room that have a very specific uh, gender mandate. And that's great because there's a lot uh, to learn from that group. And there's uh, also others that are considering gender, but that it, it's not really the leading 
um, cause. And that's interesting as well, uh, because if you're coming to the table with a strong impact cause, really incorporating gender does not mean that this is about an overhaul of your current portfolio. Instead, alongside impact drivers, it's really worth exploring. How does gender intersect with these other drivers um, that are part uh, of, of, of your work? Um, so, uh, and I will stop this sharing. Um, without looking too deeply, uh, one can really recognize that gender is really cross-cutting and there are gender dimensions to things like poverty, education, hunger, health, water, sanitation, climate change, a lot of those impact drivers um, that are already part of, of your work as an organization or, or as an investor. Um, so once you can start to pinpoint this nexus, you can be more specific about gender inclusion and how it can be a lever to amplify your portfolio work. Uh, in fact, gender intersects 14 out of the 17 SDGs um, and they have specific gender impact uh, questions and, 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 and dimensions to them. Um, so next I want to move on to the second question in, in building the profile and that's around capital. Can we move on to the next slide? Next, I want you to reflect on the capital that you hold. And capital is interesting because more than anything, it is one uh, of, of the dimensions that really defines the opportunities that are available to you when it comes to deploying capital uh, for gender equity. So I want uh, you to reflect the capital that you have. Is it, uh, do you expect more commercial market rate returns? Um, is it more around uh, below market rate uh, returns uh, once you deploy it? Or is it around capital preservation. So a lot of accelerators and incubators and, and grants that they can provide can fall into this third category. Uh, so let's move on to the next slide and, and launch the poll and see where everyone is. I'll give it a few more minutes for people to share. And you guys are fast. Okay, I think we can uh, close the poll and do the big reveal. So we've got about 30% um, uh, of people in the room that have competitive market rate returns. Um, about 10% around capital preservation and about 20% uh, below market rate return. Now, I know that these are forced categories and sometimes, you know, you can be somewhere along the spectrum. Um, but, uh, you know, for the purposes of building your profile, these are the kind of questions that we would like you to, to reflect on um, as you build your gender lens uh, investing profile. It's really interesting. Again, the people that are in the unsure category, please um, add a little bit more uh, information around um, uh, what, what that means and, and what uh, you're still trying to decide of when it comes to the um, uh, what you want to do with that capital. Because whether you're on the capital uh, preservation side of the spectrum or the commercial return side of the spectrum, there's really ample opportunities to invest. But what these different types of capitals at your disposal mean is that there's unique limits and advantages to them. And once you understand your starting point, you can really go deeper and ask, you know, where is this capital housed? How much do I have? And for whom does the instrument that I have work? Um, so if, if I'm not doing it alone and I want to really embed gender lens investing, what other partners, what other um, instruments can I use uh, to achieve my goals? Um, so let's go on to the next, um, the next slide. Um, so there are more than one gender lens. A lot of people, when they think about gender, they think about investing in women. So, um, but what we've seen is that there really can be a variety in ways in which you can consider uh, gender as part of your portfolio. 
Um, first, you can uh, really focus on uh, advancing women-owned and women-led businesses. Another one, a way that you can think about it is, can you actually um, invest in enterprises that um, through their value chains, through their supply chains, or through their employment practices at their scale and grow their organization, can they actually also um, uh, build um, and, and support women um, as they do so, women and girls. And then um, a third gender lens to think about is um, are enterprises that through their offering, that means that their, uh, their product or their service that they're selling, that in particular is about advancing gender equity and improving the lives of, of women and, and girls in uh, particular. So let's, let's look at the poll. And let's launch the poll. and see where people um, stand in this one. And um, this question is interesting to reflect upon because it's a lot easier to count heads. Uh, so women entrepreneurs in your portfolio, how many of them um, you have, but this does not always have to be the primary driver. And sometimes you can have that as well as other drivers along. Um, so building the lens that works for you and also developing the metrics and the understanding of how to really enact this is, is one way to go deep deeper than, again, just the thinking about women as, as uh, the primary drivers and entrepreneurs. So here, you know, we've got about 62% uh, that are advancing women-led enterprises, but interestingly, um, about uh, there's, there's a really good distribution around um, the second type of lens and the third type of lens as well. Um, so let's continue building our profile and go into, um, the next slide, please. This is your progress scale. So organizational progress is the movement from one state of affairs into the other. So I want you to reflect, um, where do you stand in terms of building gender lens as part of your organization? So are you still thinking ambivalent about it? Are you experimenting? Have you started to embed um, some pilots and some initial consideration into your processes around gender lens? Or have you been doing this for a while and, and you, can, uh, you have some results and, and you are a champion of the process? So let's uh, launch uh, the poll and see where people are in the room with this one as well. Fantastic. This question is about accountability. So it's thinking about where you are now and also um, where you would like to go, where you wanna go next. So who are the role models or partners that can get you there? And um, what do you still need to do to get to the next stage of, of building um, this muscle within your organization? And now let's move on to um, the very last uh, profile and the very last poll. Um, I also want uh, to put the conversation around gender lens investing within the strategic priorities that your organization has. Um, these are really the, the things that are most important for you to achieve in the next year. So they're the ones that drive action and choice among really difficult trade-offs for conflicting uh, objectives. Um, so when you think about those things that you might need to do, whether it's building your team, raising a fund, moving to a different geography, where does lens, a gender lens fall into that? Is it a priority? Is it a medium priority? Or is it really one of the top things that you have made as a goal for you and your organization? So let's launch um, the poll. This one is pretty simple, but um, it really is about the trade-offs. Um, so it's putting, again, gender lens into this context of priorities and um, uh, thinking about expectations. You know, if you do really want to build this expertise, is this something that you have been creating space for within your work in the next year? Often you find out that it is something that you talk about, but you might not necessarily have 
um, developed uh, and put it on the agenda for something that could be leading. Great, so it's, it's about 50-50 uh, between top and medium priority. Um, so that's, that's really great to see. Um, so let's move on um, to the next, um, uh, the next slide. And how do we put all of this uh, work that we did together as a group into context? I want to pass it on to Kate uh, from Upaya that will share a little bit around how these five dimensions uh, work with Upaya and Upaya's work in um, this, uh, this year. So Kate, uh, can you share a little bit more about uh, your reflections around these five questions? I think you're on mute. I believe at this point, yeah. I'm still talking when they're with, I'm muted. Um, thank you, Yana. Um, so Upaya is an investor. We are a nonprofit organization that invests uh, in India exclusively at this point in early stage businesses. And so um, you can think of me as kind of your walking, talking visual aid uh, for this framework. And I wanted, before I take, um, take us through how we answered all of these questions, you know, I just wanna uh, say from an investor perspective, having a framework like this is really important because you do need to think about gender lens investing as a set of choices and there are trade-offs. And it's also important to realize that each of these questions are not distinct um, they interact with each other. In some cases, they're correlated. In some cases, they're trade-offs. And the better you understand your position and point of view on it, the crisper you can answer these questions. Um, and as Yona put it, the more quickly you can achieve your goal. So for Upaya, um, our impact vision, we invest very explicitly uh, to create jobs for the extreme poor. Our number one metric, kind of our North Star, is livelihoods created. Uh, so, so that is our, our number one uh, metric, but we believe that by investing in, um, in women, we not only uphold our own values, we also support our ultimate um, impact uh, vision. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so that, that's the first question. In terms of financial return, um, as a nonprofit organization, we source our capital not from LPs, but from philanthropists. However, we do it through recoverable grants where we promise our uh, donor investors uh, that if we receive a return, they will receive a return. So we aim for below market um, uh, returns, but, but above um, preservation of capital. Um, and it, it, I will, you know, just put it out there that it is valuable to us and helpful in achieving our impact uh, vision that we don't have the pressure of having to reach market returns. Um, how we think about gender lens is that is, is very um, focused on the leadership question. Since 2017, we have aimed to keep an active portfolio balanced between men and women entrepreneurs, uh, which we did until June of this year. Um, right now we are sitting at 12 active investments, uh, seven are led by men and five are led by women. Uh, and um, I'll be talking in a little bit about what, what we are doing quite actively to try and bring that back into balance. Um, progress on this process, um, in some ways I believe that we have articulated pretty clearly how we think about gender lens. Um, however, I would still sit, put us at, at the medium stage. We are experimenting, we are learning. Um, I'm actually happy to see in the polls how many of you are responding um, that, that this is a very high priority that you are very clear on. I'm sure that when we, get, when we go into the breakouts, um, we can all learn from each other. Um, and then in terms of the priority ladder, um, and here's an example of where these questions are correlated. Um, Clearly, um, gender lens isn't our very top priority because creating jobs for the poor is. Um, however, it's, it's secondary to that, but we believe that by investing in women, um, our hypothesis and our experience so far shows that investing in women entrepreneurs leads them to create jobs for women. And because 
poverty is largely, um, unfortunately, a very feminine phenomenon. Um, by investing in women, we have a greater impact on poverty. So that's how, how we answer these questions. Um, and um, one, uh, one plug before I throw it back to, G to Diona, um, I mentioned that because we are currently out, out of balance, we're, we're making um, some very explicit choices to get our portfolio back in balance. And one of those is that our 2021 accelerator in partnership with MIT C-Lab will be a women focused accelerator where uh, we're only accepting applications from uh, companies that are headed by women and applications are open right now. Um, so that's an example of taking steps to live the decisions that we've made around gender lens investing. All right, back to you, Yana. Yeah, great. Um, thank you so much, uh, Kate, for sharing that um, journey of uh, upaya among um, these different elements and, and how this, um, these kind of questions inform your strategy uh, in moving forward um, in the next uh, year. So let's move on to the next slide and we will enter the second part of our workshop together. So um, well, whereas in the first part, uh, we worked a lot in thinking about, well, where am I as a gender lend investor and, and where could I go? Um, in this next stage, we really want uh, to switch gears and we wanna move from strategy and the bigger thinking into the actual processes and unpacking um, as, as an accelerator or as an investor, you know, or even as an entrepreneur, and if you're an entrepreneur in the room, where alongside the process of engaging with capital allocation and support, uh, where are their challenges and where are their assumptions and barriers um, that we can really start to deconstruct and break down. Um, so um, if you look um, at, at this area um, and, and this spectrum that we've developed, there are basically three main uh, parts um, that we can think about. So the first one is really around the selection of the portfolio and then bringing the, the entrepreneurs and the enterprises into um, the organization. The next one is around portfolio management and, and the very um, third and, and very important one is, you know, how do you grow as an organization? Do you have a supporting ecosystem? Uh, do you have places where do your funders actually, if you will incorporate gender, uh, lens investing, do they come alongside with you or do you need to actually do some convincing up if you choose um, to move forward in the side? So this is uh, a time where we will come together and, and do some mapping um, together as a group. Um, and we will do that in mural, uh, but um, so let me start um, sharing my screen. And, um, and as I do that, I will also ask Kate um, to, to present a little bit about what are the barriers uh, from Upaya's uh, point of view. So can you all see my screen right now? And if it's possible, uh, if someone can put uh, the link uh, to Mural, on um, the Zoom chat. So please click on that link. Already I see the icons that are coming up. Um, that's great. Uh, if you haven't used uh, Mural, I wanna do a very quick uh, demo. It's a pretty intuitive uh, platform. So this is our whiteboard. Um, you can use uh, your, um, you can use your trackpad or your mouse to move around in it. You can also zoom in uh, we've got the four different spaces in terms of mapping challenges. So the first one is around portfolio selection. So zoom in and zoom out. If you want to know where you are so you don't get lost um, in the space, please always refer um, to the little box on the uh, right hand corner. You can find that as a way to um, see where you are and then use the minus and plus button to kind of orient yourself. Um, you can also now, if you want to start uh, populating, 
with your challenges already i see people moving all around you can <laughs> just double click um and that will just put up a post-it and that's a way that you can immediately start uh, mapping out um, the biggest barriers to you around any of these areas so please um you know we will hear from kate now but as kate is talking i will demo by putting up the post-its for her, you can start um, also putting up uh, your challenges as, as we do this. Kate, please take it away. Sure. So um, in order to think about this, I uh, looked at um, Upaya's uh, data around our whole pipeline from start to, you know, from identification to investment to portfolio. Um, I found that we really do have obstacles at the portfolio selection level. Um, you know, the first is that we get far fewer applications from women um, for either our accelerator or for straight investment. Uh, so, so that is definitely an obstacle. Um, the other thing that I notice is that applications from women tend to be more modest um, in their revenue projections that doesn't necessarily correlate with ultimate performance, um, but it does mean that as we are looking at the, at the companies, if we just do a straight numbers to numbers comparison and maybe a cutoff, we would be more likely to, um, to, to overlook uh, some women entrepreneurs. Um, and then finally, in this portfolio selection area, so many of the companies that we have in our accelerator or um, that we do straight investment into come from referrals. And so it's, it's very possible that if there are biases in our system, we have kind of a reinforcing loop there. And thank you, Yona, for typing for me. <laughs> I hope it's not distracting. Uh, no, no, it's, uh, I, I would not be able to talk and type at the same, at the same time. Um, but I can imagine that, that those are some uh, issues that other investors experience as well. Um, I thought very hard about um, the deal structuring piece in, in, in our personal, in, you know, in our system, I couldn't um, identify any challenges, but you know, in fund expansion, um, I just wanna pick up on this piece about um, our network and the referral system and where there are existing biases, um, they can get reinforced. Uh, we co-invest very often. And if our co-investors um, you know, have some biases in their system as well. We reinforce that, um, you know, as um, in ways that we probably aren't even aware. That's great. Um, so if you've seen, I've, I've been able to populate a mural with some of these post-its that capture uh, the challenges that um, Kate uh, just shared with us. Now I wanna give you a couple of minutes um, to go in, uh, navigate uh, our, our whiteboard and please post your challenges um, along um, the portfolio selection, the portfolio management um, and the fund expansion uh, spectrum. If there's any other challenges that don't fall within these categories that you think are alongside uh, that your organization is, is experiencing, please do so um, in the other uh, challenges. Uh, whiteboard. Um, so we'll give about uh, two, three minutes uh, for people to, to start doing this. Already I see that uh, there's a lot that's happening around the portfolio selection um, side and, and that tends to be, you know, for particularly organizations that are a little bit earlier stage in incorporating um, gender lens in investing, uh, that tends to be kind of a, a bigger um, initial uh, pain point. Um, so uh, continue to, to add and populate. And when we move on into the uh, breakout rooms, I wanna give um, some quick instructions. Um, so we will split you up in groups of uh, four to five and please introduce yourself and then um, share a little bit about, you know, why you're interested in gender lens investing and um, share your number one top challenge and, and go around uh, with others that are um, in the space. We want the breakout rooms to be an opportunity for you to hear uh, from the others that have joined this session about what are the biggest barriers to the work that they're doing and, and 
um, we can do some further clustering of these challenges to see what are the areas that really emerge um, on as, as, as kind of uh, the most pressing ones. So I think uh, we could um, start the breakout rooms now. And um, if anyone is particularly very comfortable with a mural, they can take that uh, role. And as people share in, in the uh, groups, then they can do that. Um, uh, we can, they, they can help and, and, and do the post-its the same way that I, I did with Kate. So let's do about, um, let's do about 10 minutes of breakout room. And let's start that right now. Welcome back, everyone from the breakout rooms. Uh, and thank you so much for the discussions and the sharing. Um, and now I want to pass it on uh, to my DLab colleague, Saida, who can walk us a little bit uh, with some of the recap of the trends um, that we're seeing and, and some of the strategies that we can further adopt um, to, to push forward our gender lens investing work. Thank you, Yona. Um, can you hear me well? Yes, we can. Good. Yeah, so I was uh, just in my breakout room uh, commenting uh, with uh, with my colleagues about the like how the uh, mural has clustered. And obviously, as many of you have seen, there are more barriers that have been expressed in the area of portfolio selection, which is, you know, I think to what extent, one extent not surprising because a lot of us are still in the experimentation space and so kind of dealing the, with those first barriers to getting um, female entrepreneurs in, but also to Kate's point, you know, those are the most obvious, right? Like those are the easiest ones to see, whereas, um, you know, some of the barriers that have to do with portfolio management and uh, fund expansion are a little bit more subtle. So um, you have the mur mural board, you can go back to it and kind of see everybody's response. Uh, Moving us from the barriers to the solutions, um, there are a lot of uh, reports out there that are uh, ex you know, expanding on a lot of uh, different possible strategies that you can adopt to solve some of these barriers. We wanted to kind of summarize it um, for you for the sake of time in these uh, few categories. So when it comes to recruitment, um, the main approach really is about increasing access. Uh, a lot of investors say that they don't get enough applications. And we know that there are a lot of um, uh, women uh, entrepreneurs uh, or gender focused entrepreneurs out there who are seeking investment. So it's about um, being very intentional in increasing your access to go find those entrepreneurs. Uh, whether it is by employing very targeted channels, doing specific calls, um, being really explicit in your messaging and in your uh, branding that you are seeking um, female entrepreneurs or uh, gender lens, uh, like being very upfront about your gender lens and also employing uh, role models because, you know, one cannot be what you can't see. So, um, so yeah, so really it's about this idea of access. When it comes to selection, it's really a question of bias. There is uh, an, a you know, systemic inherent bias in a lot of the processes that are employed. Um, so whether it is uh, having panels that are very, um, very diverse or employing blind processes that take the bias out of the, uh, out of the picture, that's where the focus should be. Uh, in terms of uh, portfolio management, it comes down to adapting your offer and adapting your support. Uh, the women-led uh, enterprises, uh, enterprises that focus on women, uh, do have needs that are completely different from uh, in some areas. So you need to adapt both the logistics of your support, uh, but also the content. And um, a lot of uh, people who have done research in this area call for including actually gender content and gender milestones in terms of um, in terms of managing your portfolio. It also comes down to the type of capital. Um, there is definitely uh, you know gender based uh, enterprises are going to lean for certain type of capital that's more cash or debt. 
um, than it is for equity. So adapting the type of capital that you can, uh, you know, fundraise for and deploy. And then finally, when it comes to fund expansion, it's really about growing the pie. It's not just uh, about going uh, with business as usual and fundraising for just your organization. It's about making the sector bigger. So leveraging the success stories of your investees um, to, uh, to attract more capital, but also uh, telling your story as an investor, your success story um, to attract more uh, peers into the, into the, um, the space uh, to uh, influence your partners. Uh, and so into, again, so this question of ecosystem partnership, it's really about influence and uh, amplification. So um, partnering with uh, co-investors and making sure that you partner with co-investors that align with you on the vision, um, but also uh, going and seeking uh, new partners that are going to be uh, investing the same way. So we wanted to kind of put it in a, some general ways, like some general strategies that you can uh, look through your um, uh, investment process so that you can implement your gender lens. Um, but that being said, it's not a menu to pick from. So moving to the next slide, one important thing to keep in mind is uh, you cannot just, you know, wake up one day and say, I want to, you know, um, uh, apply gender lend investing and go pick a few strategy and put them in. It's re you really have to take a change management approach that starts with identifying uh, your gender lens, but also identifying the value to your organization. Why you are doing this and how is it creating value uh, specifically for your organization. And from that, really focusing um, your goals into your gender lens investing goals into your strategy. So it's not like an add-on, it's really um, embedded in your priorities. Um, and in your uh, gender lens pieces. Um, third is to um, maximize engagement. So uh, engaging people from the top uh, leadership of your organization all the way to people who are gonna be engaging the implementation inside your organization, but also engaging people from uh, the outside. So your funders, your investees, and uh, potentially your partners that are helping you build your pipeline. And then another uh, point is about, um, sorry, I, oh, I, I lost my screen. Uh, the, the fourth point is about considering your capacity and being, uh, uh, being realistic about how much you have to invest in implementing this. It doesn't come, uh, it doesn't come without a cost. So being realistic about what kind of resources you can put in into implementation, both from an organizational standpoint, but also in terms of you know, uh, patient capital, if that's kind of the direction you're taking. Um, and then finally, uh, being really intentional about putting in the processes in place to monitor performance and report back uh, into uh, in, in, to your funders, but also into the ecosystem. So that's uh, that's our advice is really to take a change management approach to it and so from our perspective at MIT D lab which um, like we have a focus on participatory design and really trying to find uh, creative solutions by bringing different voices to the design process um, this year in in a partnership with Ufaya we want to really take a, a um, kind of a zoom in on this question of max maximizing engagement so we're um, uh, running a, a co-design summit if you want to move to the next slide um, and we want to kind of oh sorry like maybe the before moving to that um, so again it, this is about a uh, the gender lens is a journey so you might start you know in a place where you are not sure uh, and, and so you cannot jump right away to being a champion you have to be um, uh, very uh, conscious that it is a journey and there are steps along the way that starts with intention, spending a lot of time experimenting and kind of defining that value, engaging your, your organization, and then defining an action plan that's fit um, to your objective before you can become a champion of the ecosystem. 
so going back to uh, what I was trying to say is that um, MITD lab being in the uh, space of participatory design, we are at the nexus of uh, many communities of practice, including entrepreneurs and uh, investors. Uh, we are taking the opportunity of our uh, partnership with UFAYA this year to organize a co-design summit uh, in August of 2021. We're going to be um, engaging both investors who are looking to implement gender lens investing in their organizations and entrepreneurs, um, female entrepreneurs in the process. And the idea is to really bring them together to co-design these uh, solutions to these barriers that the investors will um, identify in their, uh, uh, in their organizations. It's something that we've done uh, for many years and uh, we really believe in the participatory process and we have good, um, good results in terms of both the, uh, how appropriate the solution are and uh, the continuity of these solutions when it comes to um, the long term. So uh, if you are an investor or a female entrepreneur in India, uh, we really invite you to get in touch because we are in the process right now of identifying um, investors that we could invite to take part of this journey. So with that, I would like to pass it back to Yona um, to close the session. Great, um, thank you so much, Saida. Thank you, Kate. Um, and, and thank you everyone that attended and um, engaged with us in this journey to think about you know, where we are with our gender lens investing process. What are some of the barriers? And then what are some of the strategies to really um, move uh, both our organizations, uh, but also the space and the community um, to allocate more um, capital with the gender lens. So I think this was a very um, uh, brief introduction to some of the things to think about. We want to continue to engage with you on this. Um, as, as Saida shared, we actually will have an event that focuses around um, co-creating and gender lens investing. So please do stay in touch. Uh, we're excited um, to continue um, to support you and, and uh, continue the conversations in this space. Thank you so much. And I wish you a exciting next few days at Suncal. There's gonna be a lot of uh, interesting discussions and a day around gender. So hopefully this will not be you know, uh, that drop in the bucket, but this more of the community coming together um, to push this agenda forward. Thank you.